medication, side effect, horror stories. There are side effects and then there are side effects. You know what I mean? Today I want to talk about side effects. I have some submissions from followers of mine telling stories of horrible things that have happened to them from medications that their doctor put them on trying to stop something else. And then clearly, instead of stopping the thing that the medication was trying to stop, it either added something even worse on top of what was already going on, or it worked and made it worse. Either way, not the best situation. Today, I just want to bring light to some of those crazy stories so that they can be heard. I'm sort of struggling with knowing what to say because I feel like a broken record, but so much of what I do on here is just to show you guys that you're not alone. There are so many people out here on the internet and we're all going through crazy stuff like this too. If you have gone through crazy medication side effects, just drop a yes in the comments. All caps, just yes, if you totally know where I'm coming from. You know how there's allergies, like, oh, I'm sensitive to soy, my belly gets upset. And then there's anaphylactic shock. Well, there's also medication side effect, like, oh, you know, I get a little bit drowsy, so I just make sure I have it after my coffee. And then there's like, I couldn't breathe, I thought I was gonna die. If you have experienced this, just say yes. Feel free to share your story, but honestly, just say yes. I'm obviously also going to share some of my own because when I got diagnosed with chronic migraine, one of the first and only things that was recommended to me was a bunch of different medications. Medication for seizure, we did like Botox, I was offered things like Emgality and Nurtec, the CGRPs. Obviously I did triptans, I snorted stuff, I injected stuff, more pills than you could probably count. Some of them were really big, some of them dissolved. It's been a crazy ride. Let's talk about some of the crazy things that happened. I'm gonna start with topiramate because it is one of my most infamous side effect stories ever. Topiramate was one of the very first things that I think I was put on for my chronic migraine. I think in the very beginning they did Topamax and Topamax is topiramate and Imitrex, the classic abortive medication. This was Imitrex the pill, not to be confused with Imitrex the injectable that was my second craziest side effect story, maybe first. We'll get into that injection later. Anyway, when I took topiramate, all was fine except for pretty much every hour I was having an absence seizure. I I would kind of uh, do that thing where I'm like, Ooh, and then come back. There's lots of footage of that on my channel, mostly from mid-2020. Surprisingly, the medication was not suspected, and that was because I had started having some seizure-like activity in the weeks leading up, and we only knew that because I was taking meticulous notes on my symptoms at the time. Two months into taking topiramate, I ended up getting heat stroke. I know that does not sound very related to topiramate, but Topamax makes it so that you can't sweat, and I was not warned about that. So I didn't realize I was overheating, and then I suddenly got heat stroke. So that really sucked, and that was a very scary situation for my family. And then the nail in the coffin was a month after heat stroke, about a third of my hair just fell out. Started falling out in chunks in the shower. Every single shower, I would clog the drain. I would empty the drain, and then the next shower, I would clog the drain again. And that was the end of my time with topiramate. Next, let's talk about the Imitrex injection. So at the time that I was taking the Imitrex tablet, I did not have a migraine alert dog yet. I didn't know when my migraines were coming. They would just sneak up. So I would take the Imitrex pill, and it's one of those things where you can take one and then two hours later you can have another dose if it's not working. But guys, I was only able to take that first pill when the migraine had already set in because that was when I recognized it. I didn't have Buddy. So I talked to my doctor and I said, you know, I could really use something that's more fast acting. And man, did they they deliver. I don't remember if we went to the nasal first or if we went to the injection. The nasal wasn't too bad. If you're curious, I'll go on this tangent real quick. The nasal gave me a sore throat, but the sore throat lasted like two days, so it wasn't worth it to me. The injection, I did in my leg, so that's why I'm pointing to my leg when I refer to it. I think a lot of people do it in their tummy. The leg was where I tried first, and I ended up settling on my arm. In the long run, I was doing it in my arm but my very first injection. I will literally never forget this moment. I was too afraid to inject myself, so I asked my husband to do it for me. He's totally more than willing. And it was also an auto-injector. I'm soft. 
So I didn't want to be thinking or anything. I was like, I'm just going to lay down. Brian will do the whole thing. All I have to do is relax. And thank goodness I did that because I was laying down. I was totally supported. Brian did the injection in my leg. It spread and spread and spread. It was a little bit of an acidic feeling at the injection site, but then as it spread, the muscles were tensing up. And so I felt my quad go, and then I felt this go, and as it spread to my stomach, I was like, oh no, I'm not gonna be able to breathe. This is gonna be really bad. And so it came up, 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 and I went, and I took a big breath, and I laid there, and I just, oh my gosh, and like my eyes are like, and my husband's looking at me like, what have I done? And I laid there and everything was fine, but it was very scary to go through. And Beats having a migraine, so I kept using those injectors for years, literally years, despite the fact that that would happen. And now I don't. Let's see if I can switch this up a little. I'm using a dog food bowl mat to hold my tripod level. Dog mom stuff. Good. Do you see this, guys? Buddy, why do you have so much? We're gonna branch away from migraine for a second and talk about a story from a follower who took Adderall for ADHD. This follower said that when she was on her period, the Adderall just didn't work quite right. This follower said that whenever she was on her period, the Adderall just didn't quite mitigate the symptoms of her ADHD anymore. So whenever her period came, they had her double the dose of her medication. Unfortunately, the double dose gave her heart palpitations and she was suffering from heart palpitations even 10 hours after she took the medication. Yet another follower told me not the name of the medication, but that one of their medications made them forget everything and say things in a loop over and over and over again. That was really interesting to me because one of my most recent videos was about my own memory loops, which I attribute to having chronic migraines, but this person said was due to their medication. Sometimes the side effects are temporary and they only last during the time that, actually I'll, I'll say this over here. Oh buddy, where are you going? Um, excuse me sir. He wants to go under my desk. You don't like all this shuffling, do you? Look where he went. He went under. Yeah. Tripod, desk, buddy. Next up, Diamox. One of the best medications I have ever taken in my whole life. And then also I suffered some pretty bad side effects, so I ended up getting off of it. Check out my Diamox video for more information on the side effects I had from Diamox, but check out what this person said happened to them. They took a sip of soda, and they said that it tasted flat and a little bit rotten, although soda can't really go rotten. But this is really common with people who are on Diamox. Diamox makes carbonated drinks taste nasty. In fact, I still don't really go to carbonated drinks anymore, like booblies and ahas. Bubblies, but it's funny to say boob. Because I still sort of have that weird association from times past. They also said they ate a steak quesadilla and it tasted like old fish. That sucks. I don't remember if Diamox made other foods taste different for me. They also got tingles in the hands and tingles in the feet. I think that's common for a lot of different medications actually, because I got that from Diamox, but I also got that from nortriptyline. That's not quite a major side effect, but still kind of annoying side effect. And when I got it with Diamox, it was actually physically painful to the point where I couldn't keep working. My feet would be in so much agonizing pain sometimes that I would actually worry about them and I would have to stop everything that I was doing to do something about this crazy pain in my feet. For me, it was hot foot baths. I don't know what I would have done if I didn't have those. Ah, that's my planning whiteboard. Fun, and you can't see anything that's written on it. That sucks. That's a tease. This person said, oh my gosh, you guys, this is funny. Okay, this person said that when they wake up from anesthesia, they cry uncontrollably. You guys, this just took a very interesting turn. Someone is talking about taking Zolmetriptan as an abortive for their migraines. It was Sumatriptan, the injectable, that got my muscles all tensed up. Listen to this. This person said that about 30 minutes after taking this medication, which is in the same class, the muscles in the arms are burning as if 
I was doing some crazy fast weight lifting, but while not moving at all. That kind of sounds similar to what I was experiencing where my muscles were like really tense and achy and just like mad and too clenched even though I wasn't moving. This person got that ache, like that lactic acid burn is what I'm imagining in my mind. They said a few minutes later, the headache goes away, but the muscle burning remains, so then they moved on to a different trip down now for their migraines. Sounds really familiar to me too, because that's exactly what I did when I didn't like the nasal because my throat would burn for a couple of days. Even though that was aborting my migraines, it was not worth having my throat burn for a couple of days. So I switched over to a different trip down. We have stories of people sleepwalking, which is terrifying if you're not a sleepwalker and then suddenly you start sleepwalking. We have stories of people having super crazy vivid dreams of them doing things that they would never actually do in real life. Like jumping out of a helicopter, going parachuting. What's it called parachuting? Skydiving. Going skydiving. And for some people, those crazy vivid dreams are happening even when they're awake. This person said that they saw bunny rabbits hopping around in their living room, but also that they weren't even freaked out about it that it seemed totally normal and they just kind of let it happen. They just let the bunny rabbits hop around. One of my first symptoms when I came down with chronic migraine was this nuisance ear pain that just would not go away. So one of the first things that the doctors tried was prednisone, which is a steroid. And what they did was they started on a really high dose the first day and then I slowly tapered down over about a week. What I remember about being on prednisone was having this really distinct feeling that there was somebody behind me watching me. You guys know that feeling. There is no other feeling like it. It is distinct. It was a distinct feeling that someone was behind me watching. On trend with the seeing weird stuff and those kinds of things, I really did open a can of worms here. This person on Zulpidem, which I've never heard of, this person sees Things like creepy dolls, corpses, stuff like that in their bedroom. They said they're not cool with it, but they don't freak out. So, swiftly moving on from that, another person actually brought up the sumatriptan injection. And they said that on the sumatriptan injection, they get super high and they have a horrible hangover when they wake up. I also got a horrible hangover from those injections. I don't do any kind of abortives or anything anymore, but I got that too, the hangover. But you also get a hangover from a migraine attack. So I didn't really mind getting a hangover because at least I got to bypass some of the bad stuff of the attack. Oh man, someone's talking about prednisone. and This person said they got really restless, couldn't sleep, and their body was telling them that they can and must clean their entire house all night. And so that's what they did. <laughs> and a little bit more mild, a little bit less scary. There were also sprinklings throughout this of other funny tastes that people have had. I didn't think that really counted quite as a horror story though. That's not quite falling over, seeing corpses, not being able to breathe, losing all your hair, seizures, etc. But it's still no fun when you get sick and you take a medication to not need to be sick anymore, but then that medication ruins the taste of things. It doesn't seem like that big of a deal, but you know how much it sucks when you lose your taste when you get sick. It really sucks to have your taste be altered for a really long time because then you sort of need to relearn everything that you like and you're missing out on flavors that you really, really miss and you don't get to have anymore. So it's emotionally horrible, I suppose. But in addition, it can also kick up more nausea in people who are already prone to nausea. So. Sometimes that means then you're taking more medication to combat that nausea, which is what happened to me. I ended up on promethazine and baclofen because of all of that neck tension. So the baclofen was for the neck tension, which was from the sumatriptan injections. The promethazine was for the nausea. You start taking another prescription to mask the side effects of the previous prescription, and it's a big mess. And that's why I don't bother with any of it anymore. But I know that before you figure out your triggers, sometimes dealing with these medications is the only way to have any kind of hope at a normal life. So as much as it's easy to rag on these medications and the horrible things that they have done to us, I'm also incredibly grateful for how much life these medications were able to give back to me. And sometimes you do need to go through the bad ones to find the good ones that work for you. See you guys in the next video.